Hello everybody, welcome to MNB World Talk Show's brand new episode. Today we have invited someone who has dedicated 20 years of her life for human rights. You might know this beautiful lady as the writer and author of Green-Eyed Lama, which was bestseller novel translated into English and French and many other bestseller books. Well, this is Chair of Board of Local Solutions NGO and author Ayungiril Tsitiltan. Well, hello. Thank you for receiving our invitation. Well, thank you for a nice introduction. Your childhood was spent in a herder's lifestyle, in mm -hmm. nomadic household mm -hmm. during communist era in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. So can you share some of the highlight stories from that era, from mm -hmm. that childhood memories? Uh, being a herder, herder girl, mm -hmm. in a communist time was very, very different from yeah, today's, yeah. today's <laughs> being, uh -huh. today being herder, because uh, everything during communist time was uh, to, to do everything for plants, mm -hmm. and every, uh, like milking a cow was like a fulfilling a plan, so uh -huh, it was like yes. a I was like an assistant herder, not the real herder, yeah, assistant yeah. herder as a childhood. Mm -hmm. I grew up uh, herding animals from age six, mm -hmm. probably from age six till el 18 years old. Like till 18? Uh, till 18, 12 years of summer mm -hmm. was spent in nomadic uh, relatives and my grandmothers and my aunt's places. Mm -hmm. But those days when I visit there to herd, I would be helping in cow milking and mm -hmm. cow herding and mm -hmm and sheep shearing and all kinds of things but all these works were to not for gaining wealth for our family or for my uh, grandmother's family uh -huh. but it was for giving to the state mm -hmm. all the planned mm -hmm. products including milk and butter mm -hmm. and uh, all, uh, all the uh, dairy products dairy products and uh, the animal hair and animal skin etc mm -hmm. but because it was planned every day and the state collected all the milks on, on time, mm -hmm. we had to milk many, many cows by hand for five hours in the morning and five hours in the evening. <laughs> it, was like a, it was like a big, uh -huh. um, big uh, hard work. Mm -hmm. And usually uh, we would get up at 3 a.m. 3 a.m.? Yeah, to give milk Not by 8 a.m. Not even dawn. Not even dawn. In the beginning when I uh, remember, uh, as I remember my childhood memory from nomadic uh, uh, days, mm -hmm. the hardest thing I can remember is to get up at 3 a.m. and go out <laughs> to the total darkness, uh -huh. the only the stars uh -huh. above, and still we're asked and required to bring matching calves to the matching cow. Oh, yes, so, yes. So, you, so you if, if, to, if, right? if my aunt says, bring the red calf to the red cow, <laughs> and I wouldn't know which one is red, which it's, one it's, is it's black, dark, which one flat, it's, right? it's totally dark. Uh -huh. And um, the, in the beginning, I would fail a lot and get scolded a lot. But later, somehow my eyes improved. Uh -huh. Eyes got improved and I could see shapes of my animals without seeing the color yet. And but by the silhouette and by the shape of uh -huh. the animals, I could match them. So you that could recognize I them? I could recognize and match them. In the them. dark. I wow. said that was my achievement. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's really yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Your resume is... Uh, full of variety of world famous <laughs> universities. For example, well, uh, you did your bachelor's degree in economics in Russia, mm -hmm. then proceeding your master's degree in Stanford University. Then you went to Yale uh, as an Eisenhower fellow and world fellow. How did you prepare? <laughs> I mean, how did you train yourself to go into these world known, world famous universities and during these studies, like lots of studies, right? Mm -hmm. How did you manage to have family? <laughs> it's a, yeah, actually, it's a lot of work. Yeah, actually, multitasking is one capacity you learn mm. as a nomadic herder. Aha, Aha. Okay. Now. So actually, my growing up in countryside really mm. helped me to manage multitasking uh, in many different fields mm -hmm. uh, and not being bothered by it. Mm. Uh, and uh, because each time when I do one thing. 
I concentrate really well at that mm -hmm. one particular mm -hmm. thing at what that particular time. So I was always uh, excelling in schools. Mm -hmm. I was, I did my bachelor, as you said, in Sverdlovsk, Russia, and then I made, made my first master in Moscow in Russian. Mm -hmm. And then I studied English in uh, Hoop School, mm -hmm. where there was nobody who is speaking English there. Mm -hmm. So I studied English where uh, Mongolians started to teach English here mm -hmm. in 1990s and then improved my English at home mm -hmm. so that I can pass the tests mm -hmm. and then raised funds mm -hmm. from many sources uh, in order to afford going to Stanford. So I was the first ever Mongolian graduate from Stanford University, mm -hmm. but I was able to do that only thanks to donations of three scholarships and 142 donors who personally gave me money. Really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, how did you get by the time? I mean, where did you get this idea? Nobody, when nobody knew about the way, I mean, people could raise yeah. funds like this. Yeah, I asked people how uh -huh. to do that. And uh, lots of people advised me lots of different ideas, uh -huh. how to apply for scholarships, etc. And with the advice of many people, I managed to raise that uh, money and uh, managed to get uh, get to Stanford University mm -hmm. and then I wrote a book uh, that was my actually first book mm -hmm. called notes on my study in America so uh -huh. I actually shared my fundraising and uh, test uh, giving mm -hmm. ex uh, uh, examples I, I gave my uh, story to younger people so that younger people could succeed like it that. It is too. a way of giving back. Yes, right? so many people donate to my mm -hmm. scholarship donated to my study. Mm -hmm. So I felt obliged yeah. that I need to share this information with younger generations so that they can succeed. Tradition uh, we have for the show is to uh, introduce you on papers and photos. So mm -hmm. let's take a look at that with our audience and then come back, yes? Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very interesting. So from 2000 to 2004, you had been heading the Liberty Center, which is human rights watchdog NGO. Mm -hmm. And by the time it was the most active NGO in Mongolia doing lots of human rights activism and, you know, human rights protection, etc. Mm -hmm. So why did you decide to go into human rights? Actually, talking about human rights, I have to, f uh, I heard this wo word, human rights, first time in 1980. 1980? 80, when back I was a child, in back in child. Uh -huh. But those days my mother was a party official mm -hmm. and my father was just an ordinary worker. Mm -hmm. My father and mother were talking about human rights and okay. because those days uh, on Western media, uh, the or, or Russian media, they were talking about American and uh, Soviet Union mm -hmm. uh, leadership war. leadership mm -hmm. meeting, a summit. Ah, okay. But in that summit, America demanded human rights from Soviet Union, mm -hmm. and Soviet Union demand, demanded peace from peace negotiations with the American. And my mother was uh, fluent in R Russian, and uh -huh. she was translating at home, uh -huh. uh, watching TV and saying that our side, which means Soviet Union, uh -huh. Our side is demanding for peace and their side, meaning Americans, uh -huh. their side is demanding for human rights. Uh -huh. And my dad said, let's give them that human rights and let's live in peace. Uh -huh. Yeah, why not, and right? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> why uh -huh. And then my mom said, I don't know what exactly Americans are demanding. They're demanding uh -huh. such thing called human rights, but I don't know it. And then my, my dad said, why don't you know it? It sounds human and rights sounds very easy. Uh -huh. Why don't you know it? Uh -huh. So from that conversation, when I was in eighth grade, uh -huh. from that conversation, I thought there is something called human rights that uh -huh. my mom doesn't know. Uh -huh. But my mom was the most educated woman in my province uh -huh. and she was the, the prime chief lecturer of that town. And she doesn't and know she something. Doesn't know something <laughs> So uh -huh. easy. Uh -huh. So I've been in search of thing called human rights uh -huh. from 1980. But I found it mm. 10 years later, 
uh, from the secret papers that Democratic Union were spreading out to people in countryside. And one of the secret papers was, was called Universal, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Mm -hmm. When I read it, I read it so fast that I thought, this is the thing mm -hmm. I want to stand for. Uh -huh. <laughs> I really immediately liked it. I immediately uh -huh. liked it, not because the, I lacked the rights. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I liked it because my mom didn't have the right to know that. Wow, my mom, <laughs> while being so educated, didn't have the right to teach that to us. Mm -hmm. So I thought, now I have the right mm -hmm. to spread this idea. Let me spread this idea. So that's how I became wow. very passionate about that's human rights in the beginning. Beautiful story. Yeah. So Mongolians know that you were appointed as the Minister of uh, Culture, Sports and Tourism. And uh, you worked in politics for many years. So when you look back, what were the most, what were the decisions and actions that you took that are most, you are most proud of? Not just as a minister of uh, culture, sports and tourism. In, in politics. Yeah, but also say. I served as a member of parliament mm -hmm. uh, in previous term. And the, the most proud decisions probably I can brag to my children in mm -hmm. future mm -hmm. uh, are always the decisions that we made together as women in the parliament. Mm -hmm. we, uh, when I was in parliament from 12 to 16, to mm -hmm. 20 to 12 to 2016, there were 11 women members in the parliament, mm -hmm. uh, all were elected from five different political parties, mm -hmm. and 11 of us were very vigorous um, uh, advocates for children's rights, for rights for disabled mm -hmm. people, and. Uh, uh, all the women's rights, especially mm -hmm. uh, legislating domestic violence as mm -hmm. a crime for the first time. Mm -hmm. We criminalized domestic violence for the first time. And we, uh, I personally, for example, led working group of legislations like uh, human rights, uh, law on human rights of disabled people, uh -huh. law on children's rights, and also law on uh, children's daycare center. And also I was active member of the working, these working these group of mm -hmm. uh, smoking ban. Banning the smoking. Banning the smoking indoors. That was the achievement that everybody brags now, saying that previous uh -huh, parliament That really stopped. worked. That, uh -huh. that was a woman's work, you know. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, as a minister, as a politician, uh, I have to mention one thing. It's a huge achievement for Mongolians. You could bring stolen cultural heritage uh, I, I have to look at this Tyrannosaurus Batar. Uh -huh. We know it as Batar, Tyrannosaurus yeah. Batar, uh, back to Mongolia. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you share the story behind, uh, behind this bringing mm -hmm. the... Uh, this is the first ever mm -hmm. occasion for Mongolia mm -hmm. to bring any stolen uh, paleontological or archaeological mm -hmm. finding of Mongolia. Uh, heritage of Mongolia coming back. How did it start? Where, where, where How did it start? Yes, I it's mean, uh, what was the, the point? Like when, yeah, when did you find out about it? Yeah, it started at home. At home, okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very funnily, uh -huh. it started at my home. Uh -huh. uh, I was, uh, in the morning, I was just having my morning tea mm -hmm. and my husband, Jeff, mm -hmm. says that, Ayuna, before you go to work, could you please go to my room and see one news? And I said, I don't have time to see news. Mm -hmm. And sh he says, no, there is a news about Mongolian, possibly Mongolian dinosaur there. But I wasn't interested in dinosaur much that time. Uh -huh. And then I, and, and then he said, it says Tyrannosaurus Batar mm -hmm. is going to be auctioned in America in two days. You should see that news. So okay. only the, the word Batar clicked to my ear uh -huh. because Batar might be Batar, Mongolian word of hero uh -huh. probably. Uh -huh. So it does sound Mongolian, but I don't know anything about that dinosaur. So that's why I was not so excited, but I went upstairs to read that news. news. Okay. But the news said the red Tyrannosaurus Batar is going to be auctioned, near complete uh, dinosaur is going to be auctioned in two days mm -hmm. and the starting price might be million dollar. <laughs> so that was mm -hmm. the news. So as soon as I saw the news, it was Friday morning in uh, Ulaanbaatar, Batar is going to be auctioned on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I had only one working day, Friday. Mm 
Yeah, only Friday. Oh. It's, it's a and then Friday Saturday morning, Sunday. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so I called president immediately mm -hmm. and said, I think you should claim it because it's a Mongolian mm -hmm. heritage going to be auctioned there. But how did you know it was Mongolian? Because uh, I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. uh, for some, first, first of all, I wasn't sure because uh, I didn't know anything about this butter. Secondly, I wanted to ask mm -hmm. paleontologists' opinion on this, and I wanted to write Bollard mm -hmm. who is a paleontologist those days working in New York. Still, she is now working in New York. So I w opened my email, mm -hmm. started writing bo to Bollard mm -hmm. but by the time I opened my email, Bollard already has written to me, and she said, are you, 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 you had already received I an email. I as soon as I opened the inbox, there was Ballard Stick's <laughs> email there. <laughs> second and and Ballard Stick said, uh -huh. are you an assist that demanded, claim it, this is uh -huh. purely Mongolian, nowhere else it was found, uh -huh. so you should do something on it. If you don't do anything, it's going to be auctioned in two days. Uh -huh. So do something, do something. Go to the any authority to claim it, please. Uh, mm -hmm. Organize this claim, please. So she pleaded me mm -hmm. to do ac an auction, uh, mm -hmm. uh, to do action on it, mm -hmm. to act on it. So immediately I received Bollard's mm -hmm. uh, demand and I had my own uh, mm -hmm. feeling that Bahtar is, sounds like a Mongolian yeah, word. Sounds like, <laughs> sounds like a Mongolian word. Uh -huh. So I went to president and explained it to him so that he can claim. It's hard yeah. stuff. Well, uh, okay, uh, so c currently, mm -hmm. nowadays, you are uh, heading the uh, Local Solutions NGO. Mm -hmm. So as you know, we have prepared a small video to show our audience about mm -hmm. the NGO and mm -hmm. what you guys are doing there. Oh, yeah? nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, let's take a look at mm -hmm. uh, what she's doing through the Local Solutions NGO and what kind of projects they are working on currently. <laughs> So usually in the Mongolian uh, gear district, off-grid gear district, people live uh, in the yard with a gear in the house and usually in that kind of uh, property land there is a pit toilet. Uh, it's a dangerous deep pit toilet where children fall and sometimes die and children get diarrhea and san sanitation is really bad uh, with um, pit toilets. So our moment, let's change our toilet, is uh, asking pa families to destroy the pit toilets and uh, change their toilets into uh, safer for children, much uh, cleaner alternatives. So here in this off-district area, there used to be a pit toilet in that area, uh, but now there is no longer toilet there. So we will now see the new toilet that this family installed. So our project, Let's Change Our Toilet, Toilets proposes people to buy dry toilet and install it indoors. So this family is one of the first pioneer families who installed dry toilets at home. And this is a um, European standard dry toilet in which um, uh, there is no uh, sewage and no water in here. Uh, I can explain to you how it works. So, sh shall I go inside and uh, explain it to you? So, this, this, is, this is the odor management. So, the air odor goes up there. And this is the seat. So, urine goes to front side and the feces goes to the back side. So this family is quite full. You guys are doing very important work. This Jordan means, I mean, toilet, restroom, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. in, uh, in Mongolia, on the ground, we have a very horrible situation, mm -hmm. the pollution of soil the pollution. soil pollution, mm -hmm. air pollution because of mm -hmm. our toilet, mm -hmm. how we use the ground. So mm -hmm. uh, I really hope, I really wish you good luck with this project mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, we could change the whole 
whole uh, lifestyle, lifestyle in, hills, in our yeah, Gir Harbor, mm -hmm. Gir district. Yes. You wrote more than 10 books, mm. more than 10 books, mm -hmm. right? So you published Green Eyed Lama, which we have here, mm -hmm. in English and then in French. I also. didn't write in French. My book no, no, is I mean translated, translated, yes, translated, translated in into French. French uh -huh. yeah. So do you write it uh, in Mongolian or English? I mean, how does it work? <laughs> it's, uh, it works very funny, you know. Uh -huh. When I write non-fiction book, like a note of my study in America and my jobs know uh -huh, how, uh -huh. those non-fiction book I always write in Mongolian first. In but Mongolian. In Mongolian. But okay. when I write literary books, mm -hmm. like a novel, mm -hmm. Green Eyed Lama and its sequel, Sixty White Sheep, mm -hmm. I write it in English. You write it in English? I write it in English. I write poems in English. I write literary works in English. But somehow my literature side wants to come out in English. <laughs> That's it's very so funny. Weird. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. But I, when I want to write it in Mongolian, I can't. I can't write any single chapter in Mongolian I, Green Eyed Lama, because my Green Eyed Lama's original draft is Mongolian mm. draft, didn't go anywhere. So, but when I drafted in English, it goes very fast. So it's very mm. funny. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so these uh, these uh, Green Eyed Lama and uh, sixty white ships. sixty white ships. These are all translated yes, books yes. from English. Yes. The, the Mongolian yes. versions are. <laughs> yes, this is uh, the record selling bestsellers in Mongolia. Uh -huh. well, both these are both bestsellers. Yeah, both sequels are bestsellers, but no one, nobody cares to see that it says writer, uh, write, wrote, written by Ayungiril and Jeff, but translated by Ayungiril. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so you're the translator. I, I'm the translator of my <laughs> own books so into Mongolian language. We've talked about book in loud. Let's talk about the family. Mm -hmm. You live with your uh, husband. Yes. But among your, uh, how do you like to spend your time with your family? Yeah, I have two children mm -hmm. and one granddaughter. Mm -hmm. But uh, from my husband's side, uh, my husband also has two, two daughters mm -hmm. and four grandchildren. So we um, are international family. Mm -hmm. My husband is an American. Mm -hmm. And before marrying my husband, I had my two children mm -hmm. uh, in Mongolia. Uh, so we have two Mongolian children and two American children <laughs> and <laughs> grandchildren, like five grandchildren mm -hmm. is like uh, five, or five, all five of them are girls. So uh, we- All girls? All girls okay. and uh, one Mongolian girl and four American girls, etc. So, <laughs> So when we gather, what we like is we like to have family holidays together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we gather during summertime, sometimes we gather during winter time. Mm -hmm. And whenever we um, get together, uh, children have really good time. But one particular thing that we have in our family mm -hmm. is like a cross, American Mongolian cross calendar. Ah, yes, so you must so have so that. So <laughs> we have a cross calendar. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, our calendar has like photos of last year. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened in New York, whatever happened in Ulaanbaatar, mm -hmm. etc. So we collect our pictures together and use it as a family calendar. Uh -huh. So from uh, our ca family calendar, we can see what happened last year mm -hmm. with uh, everybody. And each mm -hmm. calendar year, children grew up and we uh -huh. get old. You, you guys are getting older. <laughs> yes. and, yes. We have uh, prepared a package about your hobby at home. You mm -hmm. collect stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yes. let's take a look, uh, uh, look at that video. What sh does she like to collect and uh, what is her hobby? One of my uh, hobbies is uh, to document uh, the places I went. So my uh, cups are the collections from my travels, uh, especially traveling when I travel with my family and with my husband, I usually pick a cup and uh, to, mem to remember the place we've been. So my cups uh, show where we've been together. Uh, but this uh, notebook is my very private collection because I usually go to the place wherever I go, I go to the place and first thing I do is go to the bookstores or any stores just to pick that kind of locally, uh, locally made or locally uh, fashionable notebooks. For example, when I was in Hawaii, I bought this notebook with uh, Hawaiian uh, theme. And when I went to, um, uh, for example, uh, to conference on toilet, I picked this uh, notebook with toilet picture on it. 
And when uh, I started at Yale University, this is the Yale University notebook. And when I was studying at Stanford University, of course I used Stanford local notebooks. I document lots of things that I've seen locally and uh, I make notes of the name cards of the people I met. So all this note on this is written in Russian language. And probably I was reading lots of Russian literature that time. So I had lots of drawings that I, I probably uh, inspired me from Pushkin and Chekhov and all the literature I was reading when I was young. And uh, I was drawing some tiny little, drawing lots of Russian uh, literature drawing at that time. Uh, that's why uh, it's, it's very much fun to collect notebooks and fill that notebooks with the notes and information that I gather during my travel. From all these cups, mm -hmm. which one is your most favorite one? Actually... You have to tell me straight forward, yes, like yes, which yes. one? <laughs> which one? <laughs> Not thinking. The Paris one. Paris one, yeah, okay, why? Paris one. Uh, it's, uh, it's just because I bought that cup uh -huh. right after opening the Green Eyed Lama in Paris. Uh, uh -huh. So at that l library, when I opened the book in the Paris l little library, there was a Paris cup in that bookstore so mm -hmm. I just bought it from the bookstore just but it doesn't it. say that bookstore's name it doesn't say Paris but it is a uh, cool mm -hmm. Paris cup well uh, time is ticking for us uh, so I would like to put my last question mm -hmm. it is about future so mm -hmm. what kind of future do you want for yourself and for Mongolia please give us Okay. Detailed vision. Okay. <laughs> Interesting detailed vision. Okay. Let me start with the country. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For Mongolian uh, future, especially for future generation of Mongolians, we need to give them fresh water, fresh air, and healthy economy, mm -hmm. most of all. But all these three things can be done through uh, making affordable solution affordable solutions that can help environmental problems. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm doing toilet project these times. Mm -hmm. So all the projects that I'm doing now, especially to changing toilets, it is dedicated for future generation. It is dedicated for future Mongolians mm -hmm. so that they can bring breath, fresher air and have better water, better underground water mm -hmm. from better sanitation. And by doing it in an affordable way, in a cheaper uh, way, we are trying to not burden them mm -hmm. with big debts and big mm -hmm. debts that we can pay for infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So I'm avoiding heavy debts and heavy spendings on infra infrastructure mm -hmm. and trying to uh, show the vision that we can do it in a cheaper and more affordable way. Mm -hmm. And my, for my future, of course, for every, some people want to be wealthy in future, but I want to have affordable solutions for future so that I don't have to pay too much <laughs> money. Uh -huh. So that's why even for my own future, I would like to make economical uh, and smarter uh, solutions for my home. Mm -hmm. I would like to improve my home in a way that it can be more affordable mm -hmm. and less mm -hmm. resource using. Sounds very simple, but mm -hmm. great things are simplest, are mm -hmm. the simplest, right? Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much for coming here and sharing your life experience, uh, interesting stories with mm -hmm. uh, our audience. Mm -hmm. I wish you good health and good luck with your future endeavors. Thank you. Well, this has been Ms. Oyungil Tsidirdam, who is a chair of board of Local Solutions NGO and author of so many bestseller books in Mongolia, in English, in French. So I hope you guys 
enjoyed our conversation. We will see you with our next episode next week. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.